Hey, real quick, I'm gonna start this video by telling you one of my least favorite things about webcams. It's the faked product footage. It kills me how many webcam marketing videos pretend to use footage from the webcam, but really they're using footage from like $5,000 camera rigs like this. It's, it's almost all of them. I called out Logitech on this with their stream cam back in 2020. Big problem I have, and I actually emailed them about this, is this picture right here that shows someone sitting in a living room with a very fancy shallow depth of field behind them. And then they did it even worse with their recent Brio 500 launch. Aver Media even did it, which bums me out the most because Aver Media makes great webcams. They don't need to do that. And so while I don't wanna give points to Elgato for not doing this, like you don't get points for not being scummy, it's worth noting that I've never seen a company share as much webcam footage in their webcam marketing as Elgato. It's, which makes sense because they don't have to. This webcam is bonkers. Like I'm using it right now. This is the webcam. And I'm gonna shoot this entire video on this webcam because this webcam is unreal. Let me tell you about it. So here's the deal with the Facecam Pro. Elgato did something that no other webcam makers have done and they've changed two specific things that have made this webcam better than the current best webcam. And I'm not talking like, uh, oh, if you look at them side by side, you'll kind of be able to notice that one is better than, this is a totally different game. Like this is the first webcam that I feel comfortable telling people you can make high quality YouTube videos with this. But I do need to mention something first and it's not the mustache. You probably saw me in the marketing material for that webcam. It is very important to me that I point out that that is a completely separate contract than something like this video. Or to be more accurate, this video is not in that contract. In fact, this video is sponsored by VBI, not Elgato. Elgato doesn't get to see this video. They have no say in this video. Every opinion in this video is 100% mine. What Elgato told me is they just thought I, I looked pretty and they wanted to put my face in the marketing material. I didn't even have my mustache yet, so they jumped the gun a little bit. But while we're talking about today's sponsor, let me tell you about it. And by the way, did you know that using the Stream Deck can be even easier if you import an entire profile using the Stream Deck app? These profiles have ready to use icons and hotkey actions for your most used apps, things like Photoshop and Zoom, or even games like World of Warcraft and Racing Sims. And the best profiles you'll find on the internet are from today's sponsor, Visuals by Impulse, who have a huge stock of profiles ready to go for video editors, designers, gamers, whatever. I'm talking about apps like Zoom, so you can make your video calls look more professional Slack for streamlining your comms, the entire Google suite for controlling Docs, Chrome, Drive, Sheets, all the things. Premiere Pro, making editing videos much faster. Even World of Warcraft, Lost Ark, and MS Flight Simulator. And one of the best things about profiles is that they're completely customizable. So I can rearrange the layout, I can mess around with hotkeys, I can even replace or remove ones that I don't want. And then of course, if you want to further customize your Stream Deck's appearance, BBI has the largest collection of icons available on the entire internet. It, other, other than Elgato themselves. So if you want your Stream Deck to look like a retro 80s arcade or Animal Crossing or maybe match your Call of Duty setup, use the link in the description below. Go pick some up. Make your Stream Deck look even better. Back to the video. But now let's jump into what makes this webcam better. I mentioned there were two things. Let's start with thing one of two. This is the first 4K60 webcam that you can buy. Let me just share with you how bonkers that is. This is a $550 mirrorless camera. It shoots 4K24, not even 4K30. This is an $1,800 full frame mirrorless Sony camera. By the way, just the body, lens not included. This is $1,800, shoots 4K30, tops. 4K60 on a $300 webcam is ridiculous. When Elgato told me they were sending me a 4K60 webcam, I thought that it was gonna be like their 4K60 USB capture card and it was gonna have a massive delay and it would be basically unusable. I mean, don't get me wrong, this thing's not terrible, it's just, it's really niche. Check this out, this is 4K60, that is, Phenomenal. Elgato, can you update the firmware in this thing to do that? Because I'll use this if you do. But Harris, I hear you all typing in the comments, Twitch only allows you to stream in 1080 60. So what's the point? That is a valid question. Let's talk about that. First off, let's talk about the 4K. 
why do we need the 4K? Elgato made this webcam with a pretty wide angle, which I love. I love wide angle shots that give you so much more context than just, there's a reason vloggers use wide angle lenses. But sometimes you want a close up of your face. Maybe it's for a meme, maybe it's for a reaction, maybe you just don't want the wide angle shot and you want a close up shot only using your face. You have 4K. That's 8 million pixels to choose from. Zoom in. With 4K, you can zoom in to 200% and still have a full HD resolution picture. And this is a real use case thing. This is exactly why we shoot our videos, the ones on this channel, we shoot them in 8K, even though we only upload in 4K. Because it lets us do these zoom ins that you've been seeing throughout this whole video. We can do that and still have full resolution. On Twitch, you can zoom in to 200% and still have the full resolution that Twitch can handle. And while there are a handful of 4K webcams out there, they make you choose between 4K 30 or 1080 60. You have to choose, do you want the high resolution or do you want the high frame rate? No compromises anymore. With this webcam, you get both. Love it, Elgato. But if you know anything about cameras and resolution, you know that 4K doesn't necessarily mean a good image. Like I've seen plenty of 4K webcams that have terrible color, zero dynamic range, you know, like where the dark sides are just completely crushed to black and the light sides are totally blown out. The main reason this happens on webcams is because they use a cheap, tiny sensor. And if you don't know what a sensor is, the sensor is essentially the part that the light lands on after going through the lens. Like it's it's essentially like the digital film. It's the part of the camera that actually captures the image. So let me show you this. If this is the size of a typical webcam sensor, then this is the size of the Elgato face cam sensor. And this is the size of the Sony Starvis sensor that the Elgato face cam pro uses. It's massive. And for those new to cameras, a large sensor is so important that it's basically the way professional cameras are categorized. Like, let me show you. This is a consumer camera and it's got a crop sensor or an APS-C sensor. This is a professional camera. Hold on a sec. <laughs> Only two hands here. And it has a full frame sensor. Gotta make sure you can see those. There you go. See the difference there? $550 camera. $3,800 camera. You gotta get that to reflect the light off there. If you were to look up mirrorless camera on Amazon, look at the full frame ones and look at the names of them. You'll notice that right after the name of the camera, the first thing they say is full frame because that's how important it is. Large sensor can make all the difference. Large sensors have a larger surface area, so they capture more light, meaning they work better in low light. It also has more dynamic range, so the dark areas and the light areas have more detail and color in them, and it makes it easier to get background blur. So the two big changes, we have the 4K60 and we have the massive sensor. And these two things equate to one most important thing, a webcam with such a high quality image that I can justifiably say, yeah, you can use it to make YouTube videos. That's why I've been shooting this video in a number of areas around the studio, just to show you what it looks like in different situations, to show you that it's versatile and the first shot had an open window behind me and you could actually see what was outside the window, which is ridiculous for a webcam. I've also shot in a dark room. I've shot with some RGB behind me so you can see what some colors look like. I've also been doing these zoom ins throughout the whole video just because it's 4K and I can, and I want you to see that zoom ins don't ruin the resolution. But now that we've established the quality, let's go over some of the features because we have to. You just, you gotta. First of all, this camera is PTZ, and PTZ stands for point tilt zoom, meaning you can control where the camera is aiming, left, right, up, down, and zoom in amount. It's all digital on this camera, which is possible because of the high resolution, but if you go into the Camera Hub software, you can actually see at the top, you get to choose where the camera is actually facing within the super wide field of view. You can actually save four different presets and then jump between those presets in the software or assign them to buttons on your stream deck and just swap between zooms with a push of the button. This camera also has autofocus, which is, it's fine. It's it's like webcam autofocus, where if you leave it on auto, it'll do the focus on, in fact, let me do it for you. I'll explain it with autofocus on so you can see some of the focus breathing or focus searching. I wouldn't leave the autofocus on. It's not gonna give you a great autofocus experience like something like this, 
might, but what it does allow you to do is have different focal distances set. What I would do is I would set it to auto so it can find your distance and then turn it to manual so then it's stuck there at the perfect focus, depending on how far away you are from the camera. That way, if you're close to the camera like this, like I'm an arm's length, or you're dancing five feet back, you can be in focus no matter what. You can even set the different focus distances with a push of the button in the Stream Deck app. So that way, if you do both, it's really easy to switch back and forth, really cool. Also important to know, there's no mic on this camera, which I've been begging webcam makers to take the microphone out of it. I've never seen, not once, seen a content creator use a webcam microphone, take that out and shave that cost off of it. Or put the money that you would have spent on a mic and spend it on something to make the webcam better, which is obviously what Elgato did here which is great. This webcam is the first time I felt like there is a true medium between a $150 premium webcam and a $550 mirrorless camera. Before, it's a massive price jump and there's nothing in between. Now I feel like there's a solid middle area. If you want a solid 4K image with great colors, good dynamic range, but you don't want to jump into specialty lenses and considerably higher prices, I think there's finally a solid middle ground. And by the way, this was the webcam from that previous video where I did the giant comparison of webcams where I'm like, oh, then another one gets sent to me. That This is the one I was talking about. Uh, so if you wanna see that video, go ahead and click right over here. And as always, happy streaming.